What up guys, Tim Hahn here. And today, I'm leaving. I'm out of here, I'm gone, I'm tired of it. Can't take it anymore, I gotta get it up and move. You know, thanks for watching, see y'all later. Nah, I'm just kidding. I'm actually, yeah, I'm leaving though. I'm heading to Florida, the Kissimmee area actually. My church is going to a Christian conference down there. I'm leaving a little bit early. I'm gonna be down there for about a week. I think I might swing through a couple of places, meet a couple people, do some fun stuff along the way. We'll just have to find out. I'm leaving tomorrow at around 2.30, 3 o'clock when our first church service gets out. And uh, I've not prepared, I've not packed, I've not planned, but most importantly, I've been neglecting the old Subaru. And everyone knows that Subarus, their engines specifically, along with their CVT transmissions, are known for reliability, dependability. No, no they're not. They're, they're, uh, they're made of glass and temperamental and finicky and I've definitely already had to replace the transmission control module, did that myself, and um, pretty sure I'm due for a serpentine belt. So I'm going to do the right thing. I want to drive it all the way to Florida and I'm probably going to swing through a couple of different states on my way there, but I figure if I'm going to do that, I probably should change the oil, maybe rotate the tires. Wheel bearings are getting awful loud. Should probably replace those. So let's make a list. I'm not one for planning and making lists, but we should probably do that and get to work. This isn't gonna be a fishing video. I might throw a fish catch or two at the end for those of you who wanna see it and and you know, wanna follow along to the end of the whole video, but mostly we're just gonna be goofing off in the garage today trying to get my car road ready for tomorrow. So we're just gonna get to it. Come on, let's go. All right, let's see here. Gummy bears. Uh, I've always seen real car channels, um, they write lists out on the windshield and make it look all official. Now that's usually for things like engine swaps and total rebuilds and things like that, but you know, I'm just a fisherman. I got some tools, I've pushed around a little bit, but I'm only, I only know enough to be dangerous. Let's see here. All right, so first things first, oil. We gotta change it, okay? Then we're gonna do the wheel bearings. I'm gonna run out of room real fast. Wheel bearings. Okay, perfect. After we're done with oil and the wheel bearings, let's see, what else do I have to do? We're gonna do the air filters, cabin air filter, and the intake filter. Air filters, perfect. If we have time, we might go ahead and do the spark plugs. As you know, on a flat four, spark plugs are, well, I've replaced them on a Triton engine, so it can't be as bad as that. Spark plugs. And then, last but not least, we get to clean it, because I hate starting a road trip in a messy vehicle. All right, well, let's not waste any time. I've already wasted a lot of time. Three or four weeks, in fact. Uh, <laughs> it's fine. It's, it's not. Well, since I'm doing the tire rotation and an oil change, we're just going to bring the whole thing up. We're going to kick her shoes off and let her breathe a little bit. I drove my car all day, so the engine should be piping hot. So we're going to start with the wheel bearings. Hopefully that'll cool down to second degree temperatures and you know, not burn my nubbins off for fishing. I uh, probably will. As Derek would say, you know, when you're jacking up your car, just throw it under there and it'll eventually catch something solid. That's pretty much always been my philosophy. Now, those of you who are astute or know anything about Subarus, and yeah, I don't have the other half of my jack here, so we always do it the hard way. These are not Impreza rims. Matter of fact, when I bought this car, we had steelies. Is that high enough? Yeah, it's probably high enough. Three or four more should do it. It had steelies on it, and I went, it was time to get some tires, so instead of buying tires, I found some cross-track rims with tires on them, on the face space, and had those on here ever since. Way too big. Perfect. And they changed the speed. 
So I'm always going five miles an hour faster than my speedometer said I am, which is perfect because I like to drive 10 miles an hour over the speed limit anyway. So tons of speeding tickets. Thank goodness I got a lawyer. You want to make sure you find the flimsiest thing to support them. And now this rail right here is meant specifically for just changing your tire. You're not supposed to leave it up there for long periods of time. It'll bend, could come off the jack stand. It's very important that you don't leave them right there. So that's exactly what I'm gonna do. And it helps if you make sure that you use two different brands of jack stands. So they're not exactly the same height. So that whenever your car is sitting on there, the weight isn't evenly distributed and it's likely to fall down on you while you're working. But we're gonna leave the jack here so that when my boss comes in Monday morning, he can quickly lift it up and the paramedics can then take me to the morgue. It's going pretty good. I'm using my grandpa's jack from probably about when I was born. Matter of fact, that's an AC Delco made in America. This must be pretty old. And uh, bring it down nice and easy. There's absolutely no play in this thing anymore. Oh, that wasn't bad at all. When you pull into your garage, make sure that you leave yourself way too much room on one side and not enough room on the other side. So you're constantly tripping over your tools and your parts. For bonus points, don't even check your other jack stands to see if they're trying to tip over or not. You'll know when the car comes tumbling down and puts the jack stand clean through the floor of your car. Ankle ventilation. That's probably close. Turn around, nice and slow. Didn't see that coming. Tim, if Dunn's gives you free hats, why do you always wear the old raggedy ones? Because I'm fishing and I'm working on cars. I don't want to get my new ones all messed up. Duh. So, whenever you're taking all four of your wheels off, you want to make sure you put your car all the way up in the air before you crack the lug nuts. That way you can do it in the air and you can put a ton of st stress and tension on your drivetrain, which is notoriously weak anyway. Excellent. Excellent. Only one of these wheels still spins. Could just go buy a new one, but I think about my grandpa every time I use this one. So we just live with it. Saying, make sure that you crack your lug nuts loose before you lift it in the air. Make sure you just jam the socket in there and scrap, scratch all the coating off your rims. Well, at least I knew my rims weren't going to fall off when I'm on the road. Goodness gracious. What the heck was I thinking when I put these on here? All right. All the torque. I have to, uh, torque wrenches sitting over there. Never used them. I hear they're nice. If I'm feeling fancy later, I might just use one. Make sure I got my lug nuts torqued up properly. But I'm not sure why I would do that. Why well, I can just tighten it down until the wheel starts to fall off from being cinched through. Seems like the better idea. Anyway, I don't know. I'll we'll think about it. Oh wait, hold on. Wow. You know, you always hear Derek do that on vice grips. Maybe there's something to it. Maybe there's a reason he does it. These are way too tight. Now that we got the lug nuts loosened up, we can put the car up for the first time. Lost my 19 millimeter. 
All right, now that I have it up in the air with the lugs loosened for absolutely the first time, did not just do that. Uh, let's get these lug nuts off, get the wheels off. Now I'm not certain, but one, I'm pretty sure you're supposed to have more than four mil of tread, but it's probably fine. And I'm also not certain, but um, I don't know if these are directional or not. I don't think they're directional. It'll definitely affect how I rotate these tires. I could definitely go sit down at the computer and give it a Google, but I, I probably won't. We'll just go ahead and um, yeah, we'll just pretend they're not directional. It'll be fine. Wow, these back tires are in great shape. Wow, they're wearing so evenly. Fantastic. Oh, this one's stuck. That's good. That tells me it's definitely not warped. I usually make a point to watch a couple of tutorials and uh, get my bearings straight before I cut into a project like this because even though I've done wheel bearings on a variety of vehicles ton of times front wheel rear wheel all wheel it's always a little bit different so I did the right thing and I just called up the Subaru dealership when I got my wheel bearings I was like hey what are these torque specs for the hub bolts They're like 140 foot pounds I was like all right good enough for me so we're just gonna wait and I'm sure it's sure it's fine is this sturdy wow she's more teetery than London Bridge but we're gonna ignore that. Let me go ahead and show you my tools, because I want to. I, I think it's kind of neat. So my grandpa, I have a ton, but these are the ones I picked out of it. He, he hoarded tools, mostly because he had a little grandkid running around taking all his tools all the time to work on his bicycle. I don't know anything about that. But we got some vintage SK, vintage Snap-on, US Williams, ADT, ATV, I mean, um, I don't even know what these are. Facom, no idea. And then his sockets, like, he was so weird. Let me, let me show you. You could tell what my grandpa would work on because over here uh, is all the standard stuff. And it's snap on through and through. Snap on everything for the standard stuff. But then whenever it came to standard or to metric, Stanley, modern craftsman, modern craftsman, and then more craftsman. He was just, he hardly ever used metric stuff, so he cheaped out on the metric stuff. We got two of his old hammers, completely impractical, but I don't care. These are mine, Bondus, make the best um, Allen keys in the game. He was a big channel locks guy. These are some wire strippers from back when he owned Electronic Specialist, which I think is really cool. Some old vice grips. I picked up these cheap Tectons uh, because I don't like to buy nice screwdrivers because I lose them. And cheap picks because they bend. Some tweezers for finer grabbing stuff, some punches. And then my work tools over here, which is all Milwaukee, because I don't pay for those. Doug does. But I was going to bring all of his old screwdrivers, but God forbid I should leave one on the side of the highway or something. So some of my more cherished stuff is getting left here. But anywho, enough tool time. Let's go ahead and start cracking off some wheel hubs, huh? We're gonna start on the driver's side or passenger side. That way, if this breaks off, the car will veer into oncoming traffic instead of onto the shoulder. Perfect. I don't really know what tools I'm going to need, so I'm just going to grab all of them. Like I said, I've done no preparation for this whatsoever. Oh, wow, that came off astonishingly easily. Okay, that's pretty neat. We're not going to complain about that. We're also not going to count on it happening again. Oh, but you got the brake pads. Let's see here. Oh. Oh, we're just about down to bare metal. That's great. That's where you get all your friction. It's metal on metal. Strut spring there. Ah! 
safety squints. Wedge that all up into the strut spring so whenever I hit this, it'll fall down and break my nose. And those brake pads have, uh... oh, there, they're broken. The rotor has a nice deep groove in it. That's nice. There's four bolts for this. That's good. Yeah, there we go. That one is absolutely stuck. <laughs> Remember what I said about breaking my nose? You know, we'll put it right back and pretend it's not going to happen again. Well, yep. Trip's canceled. PV Blaster. Make sure you get your eyes right up in here. Remember, if you're blind, you don't have to see an optometrist. Breaker bar. Fork. Okay. It's all up in my eyes. Well, that's a good thing. I don't need that. That thing, I just had it in my hand. This is going great. I'm going to be on the road in no time. I don't have that out of here. Uh, uh, his finger loose. This one wants to never come off. I right, just, oh. I'll let my caliper go, so definitely gonna have to bleed that later. Great. Let's see if these are ever gonna come off. I wonder what size those are. Those are also 14 millimeter. Now, the cool thing about Subaru is because they knew their cars were fragile, they went ahead and had the, the thoughtfulness to make everything a Lego on these freaking cars. You only need like four different size spanners and like three different ratchets or sockets and a Phillips screwdriver and some torques to, oh wow, around the back? Oh, fancy. There's a wheel speed sensor. That's probably not going to work whenever we're done. Nice and easy. Oh, dear God! We're fine. We're fine. Everyone will make them. Now, will you just, will you just come out so I don't destroy my destroy you whenever I change the wheel bearing or are you just going to want to stay in there? So we don't have a speedometer. So we're going to go ahead and ignore that for now. And we're going to try to break those other oh, there's nuts loose. Oh, you know what? I'm making this harder than it needs to be. I got power tools for a reason. Now, normally I'm the kind of guy who will slap a chrome socket on an impact driver. Makes it shiny, like fireworks when it explodes. But, um, as I said earlier, these are my grandpa's, and I do kind of want to let them, you know, last. Ooh, power tools are nice, man. Make sure that it's on their cricket so it strips. I better be careful. I don't want anybody to think I know what I'm doing, because I absolutely do not. You know, definitely don't let a professional do this work before you drive 14 hours. Let me save a couple hundred bucks and do it myself so I can spend double that on a wrecker whenever the wheel flies off. If this isn't friction glued on here, that should just come off. Oh yeah. Oh yeah, she's stuck. Go figure. Who'd have thought, you know? It's, it's probably fine. I'm not gonna worry about it. Yeah. I should definitely worry about that. Just in case anybody got the impression that this is a tutorial, I feel like you should know better. Also, pretty sure you're not supposed to reuse these caps. Definitely gonna reuse this cap. It's probably fine. Thought it was probably fine, but thought I should get a second opinion. Sucker is me. Yeah, it come off. Now, let's find out we don't have the right socket. Take a trip to O'Reilly's, buy the right one, never use it again, and waste 20 bucks. 
32 is it wiggling violently. So we're just gonna try it. <sighs> oh, came off. Unexpected, to say the least. Cool. So I went ahead and I cheated and I watched a YouTube video. Normally I don't like to get instructions or know what I'm doing, but I learned something. This is a dual brake system right here. There are actually shoes in here. So those gotta come off to get the bearing out. That's, um, that sucks, but whatever. Let's go ahead and Guys, I have the parking brake engaged. That would explain why she won't let go. Ah. <sighs> I'm a mechanic. I love working on cars so much. I think instead of using brute force, we're going to figure out the right way to do this. <laughs> no, I'm just kidding. We're going to get a bigger hammer. Freaking thunder. Place these wheel bearings anyway. Ugh. Watch another video, and supposedly this is an eight by one twenty five pitch right here. How about that? It seems to be. Also seems to be pretty stuck. So that's good. Including YouTube video time, we're about two hours deep on this. So at this rate. I'll be able to leave by next Sunday. Oh, it broke free! No way. I just can't believe it. I guess I gotta. I'm looking right at it. Thank you, Derek, for all these awesome fun sayings. Again, guys, look, if you're enjoying this, you need to go watch my Trips Garage, because that's where I'm getting half these jokes from. But, oh man, oh man, no way, no way, it's free! Now, this should be free and clear to just get whacked out with a hammer now. Probably not going to get that lucky, but we're going to try. fine well it was before we started smacking up the hammer but the driver's side is not fine and you have a place in the pairs so you think you'd practice on the one that's bad right nope Let's start on the good one that way you waste twice the money is it budget Sure do feel better hitting with a hammer though. You know, anybody walking by the garage, <laughs> uh, I was gonna say thinks I'm crazy. Let's be honest. They're gonna know I'm crazy. You are so loose, why would you let go? That might be the most gratifying thing I've done in a while. 
Now, let's get this hug assembly out of here. Come on, I've had it up to here with your nonsense. Ow, my finger. It's funny because locksmithing is typically a lot of precision. Delicacy is the name of the game. This is nothing like that. into three hours for one build wheel bearing and I'm sure the other side is going to be much much harder because that's the bad one so what we're going to do now we're going to take a water brush safety squints and we're going to clean this up and then we're going to apply a liberal amount of anti-seize so this doesn't happen again now I usually spring for the, the main brand brake clean stuff but this was on sale two for seven and it strictly says not for sale in california so it probably still has the good chemicals in it so we're gonna go ahead and just clean her down yeah it smells like carcinogens i approve use in well ventilated area no now, there are a few things where I will just get sort by cheapest at AutoZone or Riley, wherever, and that's what I get. However, when it comes to wheel bearings, because they are so much fun, I always go OEM. This is an OEM Subaru wheel hub. And I'm lucky. I got the last two they had on in on the shelf. After that, we're going on back <laughs> Look at that. Neat. Let's drop it on the floor and dent it immediately. Come on. Come on. Get in there. These two cross bolted, finger tight. You should just be able to line up the other ones and get them all started. But today has not, not been that kind of day for me, so we're not gonna count on it. Oh well, how about that? Looks kind of fancy. I'm gonna go ahead and use a torquelator, because uh I can and I should, so here we go. All right, 40 foot pounds, woo! What is, oh, thank God. I about had it come apart. I thought, I thought the bearing was bad right out of the box. The emergency brake thing was on. Speaking of emergency brakes, um, so there's one thing I'm actually really not good at, and that's brake shoes. And unfortunately, that's what I got. So we're gonna go ahead and hope we can figure out how to get this back together because, you know, it's not looking good. Yep. I have no idea what I'm doing here, so that's good. That's all right. I think we'll figure it out. If not, Florida is known for being flat. Like, do I really, really need an emergency brake? That bad, you know? Well, it came off of there. Why would it go back on? What, what are you struggling for there, bud? We, you just, you know, you got, you come. Well, now you, you, come on. Don't be so disagreeable. There we go. Well, that was a 
was so bad. I absolutely did not go take the other part, other side apart, so I could see how it was supposed to go. I just I remembered because I'm that good. Rebuilt. Now, what to do about this? A smart man would definitely replace this. sensors back in. Now all I'm going to do is put it on the brake pads and throw the wheel back on hopefully. And it's only taking me six and a half hours. Okay, made an executive decision guys. It's getting late. I still got a whole lot of stuff to do, but the wheel bearings are done. Actually the other side took half the time, so only three hours. I know I'm not a mechanic guys. I like to pretend to be, but I'm not. So we put on the new wheel bearing. We rebuilt these brakes, left the cracked pad over there, because that'll be fine, because who needs an e-brake, right? Went ahead and cleaned off our brake assembly, new hardware, new pads, new grease, cleaned off the wheel speed sensor, put that back, managed not to break it, torqued this down to 140 foot-pounds, torqued these down to 29 foot-pounds, I think it was, 49 and 48. And if we go around to the other side, went ahead and did the exact same thing over here. This side went a lot faster, like a lot faster. No real hiccups or hangups here. Same song and dance. Brakes are looking clean. We went ahead and wire brushed and brake cleaned these. Um, they need to be redone, but they'll do for the trip. Speaking of things that need to be done, these front brakes are actually in pretty decent shape. I'd say they're about half life on the pads. The rotors are pretty smooth, so we're just gonna ignore that. Should be fine. And same thing on the other side. So we're gonna go ahead and ignore that. And now I am really excited to say that we can, whoop, switch hands here. Go ahead and mark off the wheel bearings next we're going to throw these wheels back on we are going to rotate the tires they are not directional and we're going to take it for a drive get the oil warm because after six and a half hours i'm going to imagine that the oil is probably cool i don't know what to say um i'm not the fastest mechanic because i only do this stuff like once or twice a year um, you can see i've been working hard on various vehicles that first wheel bearing really slowed me down like that thing took way too much effort to get out the other one came right out like you'd expect, but well, eh, what are you gonna do? Anyway, let's go ahead and throw these wheels back on here, take it for a test spin, get the oil warm, and then we're gonna skip the spark plugs, do the air filters, and change the oil, and we'll be done. And then it's time to get home, get packed, and hit the road. Let's go.
know, even though it turned out to be a lot more time consuming than I anticipated, it is definitely rewarding. I was also thinking about this. Last time I had this car at the dealership, they supposedly did all the brakes. It's dealership, man. What are you gonna do? I'm not typically a crush washer or torque spec kind of guy. So whenever you tell me there's a specific torque spec and a crush washer for your oil drain plug, <laughs> no, I'm more of a turn it till I can feel the threads about to give kind of guy. And uh, I think since we're gonna be doing, I may be counting the miles, but roughly 30 hours of driving over the course of this next week might want to do it right and we went ahead and got castrol edge high mileage a wix filter which were the air filter and cabin air filter two actual oem super crush washer we're gonna do it right well it does feel good to sit down i got work to do oh like uh trick 10 says let's get back to work <laughs> Might as well talk about a little bit of fishing on my Tim Pond Fishing Channel. <sighs> Who am I, Norm? Dear God, who put this on here? Oh, right, it was me. Good job, Tim. Uh, I'm just gonna turn you till I can feel the threads break loose kind of guy. <laughs> so I've let this thing go. I try to change my oil every 6,000 miles, and I'm embarrassed to say it, but we're sitting right at 10,000, which for, for synthetic is okay, supposedly, but I've never been comfortable doing that, especially in a flat four. The oil is black, but I don't see any metal or um, bits of engine or coolant, so that's nice. You know, the reason I think that, you know, everybody likes Vice Grips Garage, right? I'm not special, but I think that I particularly like Vice Grips Garage because my grandpa, used to tell me stories about how he would do things like like Derek does and he'd tell me stories about how my dad would do things like Derek does and there's just something about it man brings me back to a time I never was and a place I never was with a person I don't really remember so but I'm glad I can bring you guys along with me I hope that some of you enjoy this if you do I, mean, I don't know why but if you do get subscribed I got at least two more of these videos coming. Dude, wow, this is not in bad shit. Huh. How much of that's on the floor? <laughs> not much. Just most of it. Now, you see, now that we're done doing the wheel bearings, we're in my ballpark. I consider myself pretty, pretty good at ripping this thing apart because in order to get to the transmission control module, all of this <laughs> has to come out. You don't necessarily have to take out the intake or the throttle body, but it really helps. So I did. Just, you know, torque this on here so that we never forget. Oil's a little frothy, probably because it should have been changed about 6,000 miles ago, but we're just going to pretend it was fine the whole time. There we go. That washer is crushed. From in here and spill it everywhere. Get it all over my nice clean garage floor. Yep, there we go. Let's take a closer look at this oil. She's black as coal, but she's alright. She's a little bit frothy. Might have some coolant getting in there. We'll find out if we get to Georgia and she overheats. 
Guys, this is monumental. We're getting our first grease stain on my new screwdrivers. Figure I may as well get the air filter while I'm right here. Gently remove this. Gently. Mm. Probably could have got another 30,000 miles out of that. <laughs> anyway, so for, first time we're taking this out of the box. He's all nice and new. Ready. Why? Help me understand it. I'm, I'm just confused. It went in fine, came out fine, won't go back in fine. Because I am not a professional. All right, I'm over it. It's an air filter. I'm struggling with an air filter. <sighs> Only on the Tim Pond Fishing Channel. I'll tell you what. <clears throat> I might make it as a professional YouTuber. I think if my dreams were becoming a professional fisherman, you know, cool. But a professional auto mechanic YouTuber? No way. How is there a cigarette but how? How is there a cigarette butt in my air intake? Would you, does somebody explain it to me, please? Huh? Anybody? Oh, it's just me. I, I don't know if this is like a tribute or an homage or something. I just, I enjoy Bright Scripts Garage so much that I'm just having fun. I'm doing, I'm doing, you know, what I would do if I was goofing off with my friends. And not to get too sappy with you guys, but there's some of you who are subscribed who comment every single video, actually watch the video, and I, I consider you my friends, so I have no problem goofing off and being silly. You know, I hope if Derek ever watches this, he doesn't think I'm trying to just rip him off to, you know, for whatever reason, not to get views. <laughs> I'm dropping a bucket to that guy, but it's not meant to be insulting. Anyway, I'm rambling now. I, I need to stop procrastinating getting this air filter back in here. There we go. Air filter is done. Let's put some oil in this girl. Cast from Edge, unlock maximum performance. No. Mighty Car Mods uses it, and I've always had in love with it, so that's what I'm using. Do I buy it because I think it's better? No. I buy it because I'm supporting the brands that support the channels that I like. For instance, if I ever had a car worth detailing properly, I'd buy spray, uh, spray wet products. I have now used three and a half quarts. So we'll let that sit for a bit, drink it up, drink some water. So, how have you been? Um, where was I? Right, plane ticket. No, changing oil. Okay. There we go. Now we're cooking with fire. We're gonna let that settle. Eh, we'll just a little bit more. Just a just a touch. Oh, way too much. Perfect. What we're doing this and letting that pour in the pan. We'll let that oil settle in there. Now tell me, am I, am I the only one who ever gets super impatient and ends up spilling the oil? Because boy do I. I think I lied. I do see some sparkles, unfortunately. Hmm. We're just going to pretend we didn't see that. Hmm. Remember that one time we were talking, having a good time, and I was telling you about how super engines are made of glass? Yeah, I remember. Looking good. 
I think that's right on the full line. Perfect. Now, what you can remember is, is if it comes right up on the full line, that's okay uh, because it's going to absorb some of that oil anyway, and that oil is going to drop a little bit. So, keeping that in mind, we're going to bring it right up to the full line. We just scotch more. There we go. Coolant level is not great. <laughs> We're definitely going to have to top that off. She's a little bit low. Be sure to use the same one that you used before so it gets nice and lubricated. Probably going to just add water. It's still water. You know, I am going to Florida. Not going to freeze down there, hopefully. Speaking of freezing down there in Florida, let's go ahead and have the uh, initial washer fluid, the de-icing kind. <laughs> Check our oil level one last time. <laughs> right on the full dot. Perfect. Nothing to do but get her down on her feet. And just double check everything. Left the cold reservoir open. I am a little disappointed that I didn't get to go to get to the spark plugs, but they'll be alright. Hopefully, this will be the last time we have to crack open the torque wrench today. 90 foot pounds of pressure, if I do recall. Gauge that emergency brake. About ready for our test drive, but first, we gotta mark off oil and the air filters. I just put in the cabin air filter. Spark plugs, they're gonna have to wait. So what we're gonna do is we're gonna put an X through those and then clean it. Anyway, let's take it for a test drive. So I can hear back there already some sort of scraping and I'm thinking it's the heat shield. So, Sounds like the heat shield for sure. But it doesn't sound like wheel bearings, and that's always a plus. Oh, I'm gonna call this a success. I'm gonna go back to the shop, check this out. I'll let you know in the next video what it was. But in the meantime, I need you to remember, stay safe, stay happy, stay healthy. God bless you. Keep on fishing and working on your own vehicles. And I'll see you in the next one.